Alright, welcome back. It's actually been a couple of days since I last recorded FTL and I stopped that last, or this run in fact. Uh, as it turns out, as soon as I stopped recording, started to feel a little bit odd, got sick, got a cold, lost my voice, kept coughing all the time. I couldn't finish the episode until just now, so why don't we just do that right now? Flak, Heavy Laser, Flak Gun Mark 2. I'm just trying to remind myself what we have. Cloak, two defense drones, three bars of shields, no scrap whatsoever, pretty decent crew. Let's continue on here and finish off this run. We're in Sector 7. If I remember correctly, we have absolutely no chance of getting the achievement for this ship, but that's okay. Back at battery, have to remember to use that. Two defense drones and 22 drone parts. And we find a science station willing to buy drone parts. I think I'm going to sell drone parts because... We don't need that many. We don't have a hacking system. We only need to use one defense drone up until the rebel flagship fight, so I don't mind selling them now, and we're probably going to get some more drone parts as we go. And even if we find a ship on this sector that has a missile launcher, we have the cloak. The cloak's going to be good missile defense, 100% missile evasion, and if we can land in our shots, take out the enemy weapon systems, they're not going to be firing any more missiles at us. So I really think that this is okay selling 12 drone parts. On the next sector, we can find repair stations that will give us about five drone parts each. That's pretty good. So yeah, I'm going to take this offer. That scrap we can use to dump into our shield system, into the cloak to expand it once it hits 15 seconds. That's more than half of the charge time of the flak too. So yeah, I'm perfectly fine with selling drone parts right now. We are in a position where we have plenty. We are in the land of plenty. We have enough equipment, enough stuff on hand that we are not going to be able to have it. We're not, we're not going to have any problems with this sector. So why don't we just try to try to expend our resources? We're not going to use 14 missiles if we can get rid of those. We're not going to use, ten, uh, you know, 22 drone parts. Let's get, let's get rid of some of those. And yeah, it's all going to work out nicely, I think. Now, we're go now we are boarded. That's kind of unfortunate, especially in this beacon that is a solar flare. Worst case scenario is we take one or two points of hull damage from the actual solar flare itself. The enemy crew is not going to be that much of a problem. So I think what I'm going to do is try to just fight them in this empty room and then l vent this guy in the room with the next to the back of battery. He'll take, you know, a lot of damage from the low oxygen. We can run in there and kill him once he's almost killed. I don't want to move the man on my door system because I want him to stay there so that this Brecken invader just gets killed and now he's gonna try to walk back into the room now that his comrades in arms are dead and we can just let him walk in there open up all the doors put the auction up to level two and get everyone back to the med bay and as long as we jump before the solar flare hits we won't take any damage get Kremity back on the shield system fires did not start I, I did not miss time that we are okay just wanted to check, just wanted to make sure. Okay, this is a plasma storm. We have half power. The enemy ship has a flak gun and a four shot laser. Not that bad. It looks like they did bring up both of their weapons online, which is probably best for me because it means that ideally I can just cloak out of the flak shots. And then if their laser, if they fire it, you know, when it only has one or two laser shots charged, it's never going to penetrate my shields as long as I get power into the shield system. So let's get a little bit of power into... Uh, Shields right now, just make sure the shields stay up. We will keep power in Flak Heavy Laser. They have one bar of shields. Flak Heavy Laser is going to do substantial damage to these guys. They are going to board us with a Ion Intruder Drone. I don't want that to land, so I will use one defense drone here. I would rather shoot it down. Those things can be so freaking annoying to deal with, so I'd rather just not deal with it, if at all possible. It missed, so I'm going to have to deal with it. That actually substantially sucks. So you know what? It's not going to shoot it down again. No. So get rid of the defense drone. Get those shields back online. We're going to need oxygen to level two because we're going to have a breach in the ship. Our shields are going to be ionized, which actually really sucks. Because it means we can't uh, block the laser shots coming in at us. That's going to do three ionization damage. So I guess what we should do is use the backup battery, divert the power into the shield system. Uh, let's put the hard power in it, just in case. Keep the oxygen powered up. And we gotta kill that drone. 
We have the cloak though. When the shields go down, we can still cloak out of the flak shots. Okay. It's not too bad. Try to take out this drone, do as much damage to it as possible. Their shots are coming in. This is where we cloak. 85% chance to dodge. And we do have shields for a split second. Shields will be down now, but they were up long enough that two of those flak shots hitting didn't do anything. Good. We can fire on them, we're gonna fire on their weapon system. That's the most important thing right now because if I can take out their weapons, I won't take damage. Ideally. Good, two shots landed and we started a breach. They only have a flat gun remaining. That is still a bit of a problem, but it's not as big of a problem as it was a second ago. Instead of a laser charger weapon, they have turned on a beam drone. We still have one bar of shields though, that's why I powered up my shields fully, just to make sure that we had some shields after the ion hit. This thing is going to ionize immediately, yeah, so just... I guess get the uh, shield system repaired as quickly as you can and turn on the oxygen. Although we're gonna run out of oxygen, in, oxygen throughout the entire ship in a second, so... Not really sure what we can do about that other than just uh, depower the oxygen, power up the engines, and hope we can dodge the flak shots coming in at us. I could use the defense drone, but uh, I don't have anything to remove the power out of. Like, I want the power to be in engines because with a 45% invasion chance, we might m dodge enough of those flak shots. Okay, this drone's gonna go back into the shield room. We can kill it very easily. Beth and Kremity will be fine. We did dodge enough of those flak shots that I am okay with with the power situation. I'm okay, I'm okay with the decision not to power up the defense drone and maybe shooting down some of the flak pieces. And I'm gonna go in on their weapon system again. Good, their flak gun's now completely offline. They do have another defense drone, or they do have another ion intruder drone that they're gonna be firing at us in about 10 seconds. That sound effect of another drone powering up must have been aboard their ship. Maybe it was a, uh, a repair drone or something. I don't know. I don't know. I can't tell, but that's okay. It's okay that I can't tell. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Let's get that shield system repaired. When the shield system gets repaired, the oxygen being powered up to level 2 will uh, replenish the oxygen throughout the ship very quickly. For right now, though, let's get everybody healed up. Beth especially, that Mantis... That Mantis gets hurt quite substantially when that, uh... When that room has no oxygen, trying to get the repairing done, because Kremity takes half suffocation damage. Beth does not. Now let's see if we can't shoot down this Ion Intruder drone again. Or, actually, not again, but for the first time. Good, there it goes. Ion Intruder drone is shot down. Still need shields, don't need the defense drone for a minute. I can put that power into oxygen. Oxygen will come back very quickly. Everyone go back to your rooms now. All right, let's keep the doors open just so that the oxygen replenishes a little bit more evenly. We still have the cloak. We can use that whenever we want. Okay, they're firing in their ion intruder drone. Their weapons are starting to come back online. Now I think we actually go in on their drone system because their weapons don't bother me all that much. I have shields, I have cloak available. I'll have the backup battery in about a second. Let's take out their drones. And that just killed them instantly, good. Whew, a bit of a bit of an interesting fight. I hate those ion, ion intruder drones. They're always a pain in my ass. But we managed to make it work and we didn't get hit for too much damage. Or actually, we didn't get hit for any damage, did we? Luckily, we did dodge just barely enough of those flak shots. Well, we dodged all of the flak shots when our shields were down to one bar. Because even if even if one flak shot had landed, that beam drone could have done some hull damage. All things considered, hull damage doesn't matter at this point in the game because in the, ne the next sector will heal us for 10, but I would still rather not get hurt whenever I can. Attempt to follow and help, we just get another crew member. It's a Mantis. Could get rid of Naomi. And I think I might... We have Charlie on shields, and Charlie, or not on shields, excuse me, on sensors, and Charlie is gonna be our repair personnel when we need it. On the Rebel Flagship fight, they're gonna be doing the repairing since the sensors are gonna be uh, unmannable anyways. You, you, can, you can never get third bar of sensors on the Rebel Flagship fight. We have two humans. So Naomi is kinda just an extra crew member right now for doing occasional repairs, but if we get boarded, I'd rather have a couple of mantises who can run around and kill people. Now, one of the mantises will be in the door room, but I can always just move them out. We have second level doors already. 
yeah, let's get rid of Na Naomi. Naomi. And actually, what we should do now is put the NG on doors and then put the mantises in sensors, or at least one of the mantises in sensors. Because I, I would r much rather have sensors for a minute or, you know, for a split second in the uh, in the combat and then move them off of sensors. And I'd much rather keep the NG on doors permanently for as long as possible. Now, I, I do know that I was trying to train up the uh, NG as a replacement pilot if we ever needed it. And he is good at piloting, but he'll just have to walk from one side of the ship to the other if I do need him as another pilot. We only have one person who's good at engines right now. Monsvik! So let's make sure that they stay alive, but other than that, we're good. Let's keep going. Keep going through this nebula, maybe get a couple of extra jumps on this sector. Rebel Auto Scout, four bars of shields, they're trying to escape. Now this sucks, this is interesting here. I think we go to the flak gun. Not enough system power for the flak gun and the heavy laser! I should have upgraded my weapon system before I jumped here. Yeah, because this is a bit of a problem. Problem is, we need to punch through their shields in order to take out their piloting system, or else they're going to get away. The Flak Gun Mark II will be able to punch through the shields very easily. The Flak One and the Heavy Laser can only get through and do damage if literally all five of those shots land. Three shots from the Flak, two shots from the Heavy Laser. I would prefer to have the Flak Gun Heavy Laser that gives us one good opportunity to deal damage to that piloting room, but I don't think we're going to get it. I think we're just going to have to hope that the Flat Gun Mark 1, when it lands, lands in enough shots on the piloting room to take it down into the red. And at that point, I could switch over to the Heavy Laser, or I could just keep trying again with the Flak Flak, take out the shield slowly, maybe take out, take out the engines or something. I don't know. This is a weird situation we've got ourselves in here. The ion damage, as long as we can dodge one, every other ion shot will be fine. I can always cloak when I need to to buy myself some time for the shields to come back online. We actually did do, we, wow, we actually did do enough damage to that piloting room. I'm very surprised about that. And in fact, I think now we do go back over to the heavy laser because it's two, it's a guaranteed two damage on a system when it lands and we can fire it almost twice as fast as the flat gun mark two. So yeah, we're going to switch over to the heavy laser. We're going to try to make this work here. Probably try to take out the shields next. Maybe the engines? Now let's hit them in shields because if we can take down the shields one bar, then both heavy laser shots can land on the next shot. I like that. Good. Shields are down too. We keep hitting the shields. Every time we land a shot, we can do more damage on the next round. Uh, I kind of feel like I have to cloak now that ion damage. It looks like it's about to land. Let's just save ourselves a little bit of time here. Or not time, but save ourselves a little bit of uh, worry about our shield situation. Let the ion damage dissipate. We should be fine. Their weapons are not firing anytime soon, so the ion damage should completely dissipate. Flat goes in, heavy laser goes in again. Good. Now they only have one bar of shields, and there's a breach in the shield room so that their shields will not be able to get repaired. Every shot that we fire from now on from the heavy laser should land as long as the flak shots land first to take out the shields. So what do we fire on next? Probably... <sighs> probably weapons, all things considered. I would like to not take damage on this encounter, but I... I feel like we're actually fine. Ion damage on the shields will dissipate and we can always cloak again in about seven seconds. That's... that's pretty soon. That's pretty soon. So yeah, let's go in on their engines. You know what I've, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting? This is why I need to not take so long of a break between when I record. I need to put on my headphones. That's why I, I'm not hearing the sounds quite as crisply as I normally do. Ah, there's the audio. I was wondering, why, the, why did the audio like sound like it was far away? Well, I didn't have my headphones on. I couldn't hear it adequately enough. But yeah, there we go. Took a little bit of damage. That's honestly kind of expected. I didn't expect us to get out of this without a little bit of damage due to those ions, but our shields will come back online. And in, in, actu in actuality, the reason why we took damage there was very lucky for the enemy. Their basic laser hit and their combat drone hit at the same moment, allowing the beam drone to do damage while my shields were still coming back online. That's gonna happen. That's gonna happen sometimes. We still have enough HP that we can get healed up for full on the next sector. 
One more shot will kill them as long as one heavy laser shot lands. Good, and they're dead. We picked up 24 scrap and those mantises are gonna get the sensors repaired eh, pretty quickly. With two of them, that's, that's effectively one human doing the repairing. That's not too long of a delay. And we should get the next bar of weapon power. We're gonna want full weapon power by the time we get to Sector 8, by the time we fight the Rebel Flagship. And being able to use the Flatgun Mark II plus Heavy Laser in a situation like we just had is very nice. We will carefully explore the debris and we find a Pike Beam. And honestly, I feel like Flak 2, Flak 1 Pike Beam or Flak 2 Heavy Laser Pike Beam is the way to go. Flak 2, Flak 1 Pike Beam is 7 weapon power, but with the Heavy Laser, we basically would wait for the Flak 2 to fire. It's going to completely take down the enemy shields. We can do a lot of damage to a lot of systems with the Pike Beam. We can do a lot of damage to one system with the Heavy Laser. We kind of have the, have the best of all worlds. We can easily penetrate shields. We can do a lot of hull damage with the Pike Beam and the Heavy Laser. We can do a lot of spread out system damage with the Pike Beam. We can do a lot of concentrated system damage with the Heavy Laser. This is like a really nice weapon setup we've got here. I'm going to keep the flak gun one, you know, on the weapon system for now, but I'm probably going to swap that out for the pike beam by the time we get to sector eight, by the time we get the weapons fully powered, which is going to take a little bit of time. You know, we still have a few jumps in this sector, and we still have about 110 scrap that we need to collect before we can fully upgrade the weapon systems. Okay, we're going to get boarded. Let's get the... Uh, Let's get the mantises ready. What I, I think the next evolution in my own FTL play is memorizing how long it takes different bombs to charge. Because I'm looking at this, and that bomb, it looks like it's going to charge at about the same pace as the Burst Laser Mark III, which makes me think that this might be an ion bomb. And if it lands in a, in a nasty room for us, that could be a problem. You know, if it lands in the shield room and it ionizes our shields by four, that's going to be really bad for us. But I think we can cloak out of the way of the bomb, so it's not that big of a worry as long as I just remember to cloak as soon as it starts coming in at us. Also forgot temporarily to have my weapons powered up because we were in a plasma storm just a second ago, but that's okay. It's not going to do too much against us. I could have the NG walk over into the sensors room, and I might as well because these two guys are going to die. That looks like a normal bomb, but I am still going to cloak out of it. It's a normal bomb. I don't I don't want to cloak out of it. I don't care about a normal bomb. Sensors are going to go down. Oh, whatever. So that's just a normal, old-fashioned... Not a small bomb, but just like a... Is it a small bomb? I forget. I'll cloak out of the lasers. How about that? Send everyone back into the medbay, get them healed up. Two of their crew members are dead. They couldn't bring them back because their cloak didn't come off of cooldown. They don't have a clone base, so they're going to be dead permanently. Let's attack their weapon system, try to take that burst laser offline or the bomb. Either one will work for me. Good, both shots landed. That's four damage. Going to take them a while to get that repaired. Another bomb coming in. Ooh, get out of the way! Mantis can go get the backup battery repaired. We're not using it. Ooh, we might actually be able to kill the Mantis. Not the Rockman. Rockman has way too much HP. But the Mantis is kind of just hanging out in that room. Yeah, easy kill. We did start a breach in the room, but they will be able to get that breach repaired pretty quickly. So we're not gonna we're not gonna rely on low oxygen to kill these guys. They will also walk into the med bay once they get, uh, or once the oxygen is depleted from the room. So yeah, there he goes into the med bay. I can maybe kill him in the med bay, but maybe I could do that just by attacking the oxygen system. But because the Rockman has so much HP, he's going to be able to finish his repairing. So I don't know, I don't know how we can kill the crew here. Maybe if we started a breach in the oxygen room and then a breach in the med bay, it could work. At this point, I'm just kind of delaying them, make them have to do a lot of repairs, take time healing if they run out of oxygen, and we'll be able to kill them eventually right about now. There we go. With no pilot, that's pretty easy. We get another 36 scrap. Honestly, not that much scrap. We have not been collecting much scrap in the past couple of jumps. 
We don't have a scrap recovery arm. We do have a distraction buoy, which gives us one more beacon that we can go to every sector, which is almost effectively like a scrap recovery arm, but not quite. Let's get the let's get a defense drone out. If we can shoot down this hacking part, I would I would love it. I would love it, because it means I don't have to worry about Medbay being hacked. I wouldn't have to worry about my shields going down or anything. Good, keep shooting it down. And I'm gonna stick with the flat gun heavy laser because the flat gun's gonna tear through the super shield. We might not be able to do damage to the ship, but the first shot from the flat gun is basically to take out the super shield. Second shot will be able to do damage. And actually, what I should do, I guess, is fire the heavy laser first. I think they, ooh, we might, nope, okay, good. Uh, I think we might actually be safe from the uh, hacking part. I think we shot down enough of their uh, drone parts that they can't hack us anymore, which is very nice. Now that halberd beam's probably probably gonna do a little bit of damage. Yeah, the shields didn't come back online fast enough. That's okay, flat gun, just take out their super shield. We'll get stuff repaired now. Okay, weapons are back online. Get the mantises into the sensor room. Might as well see what their weapon charge is. More information can't hurt. Good, good, good. And our shields did stay up fully this time, so our weapons are now safe. We can fire in at them. Good stuff. That was a lot of damage. They only have the halberd beam now, so they can't hurt me technically. Might as well leave the defense drone powered up. If I have excess power, I mean, why not? Oh, you know what I should have done? Should have just freaking cloaked. When that when my shields were down to one bar and that halberd beam was about to fire, should have just cloaked out of it. Would have saved us from t all the damage that we took there. That's my bad, but that's okay. It's not too much of a problem. Now, do I go in on shields or oxygen weapons? Honestly, I think O2. Keep them busy, their oxygen's offline, they can't do a lot of good repairing without their crew dying. It's gonna cause them to basically have to delay a lot of their actions, They'll delay a lot of their own repairing and stuff. Now, the NG's gonna get stuff repaired very quickly, but that's okay. I'm not, I'm not worried about killing crew here, I'm just worried about delaying them so I can kill the ship. Well, we don't really have that much time, so I think we just go to one more beacon, store, exit. With 154 scrap, we are very close to being able to pick up uh, both of the weapon upgrades. And if, in fact, if we go to the store, I might be able to sell something to make that happen. Oh, this sucks. Okay, we're being hacked again. Get the defense drone out. In fact, I might want to get both defense drones out. In fact, I'm going to get both defense drones out. None of system power. I can't. Gotcha. That's okay, hopefully it shoots it down. I'm very worried that we can't take down the super shield before the pulse happens, because if we can't, then their, sh their stuff isn't going to be ionized. When the pulsar lands, my shields will go down to one bar, and they have four heavy lasers. If we can't take their weapons offline shortly after that, we are going to take substantial damage. This is going to be very close. We do have the cloak. The cloak is our saving grace here. If we have to cloak out of their laser shots, we have to cloak out of their laser shots. Them hacking my defense drone is okay with me. Good, we dodged one shot, that's all we needed. Two chain lasers coming in, hopefully they just bounce off my shields. One shot on it, or one damage to an empty room does not bother me. Pulsar lands. Gotta fire in the flat gun right before the pulsar actually goes. Just in case it gets, gets ionized, I wanna make sure that it actually fires. Their super shield is almost completely offline. We wait for the flak shots to get in there. Fire in the heavy laser, fire in on their weapon system. If both shots land, I can take out at least one of their guns, maybe two. Actually, yeah, if both shots land, I can take out two guns. I took out one gun, it's the chain laser. That means that we can cloak out of the next laser shots with 100% chance. Actually, the engines are ionized. It's not going to be 100% chance to dodge, but we do have one bar of shields. Okay. I think we'll be safe, but we could take some damage here. There's nothing I can do about it. I can cloak, 80% chance to dodge. Hope that that's enough. It's enough. Good. And now our weapons are going to get charged up before their weapons do again. 
and now their shields are ionized. Heavy laser, go in, take out those weapons. Okay, they still have one laser, but one more flak shot might actually kill them. And I could fire in on their weapon system and hope that one shot lands, or I could fire in on shields and hope that five shots land to kill them. Here's a fire in the room. I mean, I, su I suppose we just fire in on their sheet. <sighs> fire seven shots. They still have full piloting. Engines are ionized. I think I try to do one damage to their weapon system to, to take that last heavy laser offline. It killed them anyways. Okay, you know what? That's good too. We pick up a lot of scrap. We do have enough that we can get the weapon upgrade. We might as well go to the store first and see what they have. Crew teleporter, clone bay, mind control. Some weapons that we don't need. A defense drone mark two and an anti-drone. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. I like the idea of the defense drone. I like the idea of the anti-drone. The defense drone mark two is not as good as the Defense Drone Mark I at shooting down missiles because it can shoot down lasers and ions. But it is also better at... it's more accurate. So it, it will shoot down the hacking part in Phase 1 more reliably. It will shoot down missiles more reliably when it does shoot at the missiles and it fires faster. The Anti-Drone is good for the second phase. We don't have any shield recharge augments. We do have the distraction buoys. We could save them for the next sector. I think we save them for the next sector. I don't think we sell them. I honestly think we sell the flak gun, one defense drone, buy a defense drone, upgrade ourselves so that we can use both defense drones at the same time. Maybe anti-drone defense drone? For the second phase? We have the flat gun, we have a heavy laser, we're gonna have a pike beam. I think damage output's not a problem for the Rebel flagship. I think survivability is gonna be a problem, especially right now. We only have three bars of shields. We do have a cloak, though. We do have a cloak, though. Okay. Okay. We're gonna sell the flak. We are going to sell... I think... Both defense drones. I think we buy the defense drone mark two. I think we buy the anti-drone. Now that, that doesn't put us too far behind where we were when we jumped to this sector. That only puts us 23 scrap down from where we were when we came here. And I think we're better off at defending ourselves against missiles and drones now. We can't use the defense drone until I upgrade the drone control system once, but that's okay. Next two upgrades will go into weapons, I think. Wait a second for the uh, shields to come back online. Might as well. Go to the exit. We can even go to one more beacon after the exit, and I think I will. We have six engine power. We have a cloak. And we can sell 15 missiles. Excellent. So there is the last weapon power that we need. It means we can get the pike beam online. When that flak hits the pike beam, it's just bonus damage, basically. And we are in an asteroid field, that's okay. Manta ship, pirate ship. Do we get the defense drone up? I don't think so, I don't think we need it. We have a cloak that we can use when they fire in their lasers. Their uh, burst laser mark one, burst laser mark two will fire at almost exactly the same moment. That's gonna be when we cloak, our weapons will be ready to fire, and they're not gonna have any weapon systems online when we are done with them. Let's just leave it at that. Now, they're not going to go into the med bay, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. My crew will go into the room and fight them. NG might as well help. Their lasers are firing. That's when we cloak. 108% chance to dodge. Everything misses. Wait a second for the flak. And I think we go after their weapons first. Pike beam can go after everything else. Thank <laughs> you. 
Heavy laser can go after weapons as well. We started a big fire, did a couple of points of damage. The burst laser and the laser charger are both offline, which is excellent. Send my crew into the med bay real quick. Power situation is okay. They're trying to repair the med bay, the teleporter. NG's trying to put out the fire. This is good. We might be able to kill the crew here. It's probably not going to be possible, though, because they have so many crew, including a Rockman and an NG. And they do have at least a level one, or excuse me, at least a level two med bay. So I think we just worry about killing the ship. They still have some fires, but they're going to be able to put out the fires pretty quickly. That's a lot of uh, fuel on that surrender offer, but I don't think it's good enough. Yeah, there they go. Easy. 57 scrap. That's enough scrap that I feel good about coming to this beacon. You know, we can always dump that into, you know, reactor power. That's almost two reactor power right there. Do we defense drone? We might not need to. We are going to get boarded, though. We might not need to use the defense drone. It depends on what kind of a missile that is. If that's a, uh, a breaching missile, we should be able to cloak out of it and still dodge the ASB. If it's a Hermes, we're probably going, going to need to use the defense drone. But we'll, we'll wait. We'll wait and see. It feels like it's going to be a breaching missile. It's taking a long time to charge. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a breach at this point. I think now we worry about the cloak. And there goes the ASB. Now, there it goes, and it misses barely enough time. And we go to the Sector 8, Last Stand Sector, Last Sector. There's the hull points repaired, so we're at full health. There are three repair beacons, not on the way to the base, so if we go to them, we're going to have to kind of beeline probably this repair beacon and then go to the base and fight the Rebel Flagship. The Rebel Flagship is one, two, three jumps away from the base. That's not a lot of time. That's not a lot of time. I think that I think that it can spawn four jumps away from the base at times, so it's spawning so close means that we're going to be in a little bit of a rush here. We still need to upgrade our ship to get that last bar of shields. Ooh, God, it's, a, it's always scary when there's a lot of noises coming from the ship. A lot of drones. We can cloak out of the first missile they fire. If it's a breach, we don't need to use a, a, a defense drone. It's not a breach. It's a Hermes. Yeah, it's a Hermes. Okay, let's get a, a drone out. They should shoot it down. It should shoot it down better, faster, stronger than a, uh, than a, um, Defense Drone Mark I. Now the question is, do I use the Pike Beam to break down the Super Shield, or do I rely on the Flak? They're gonna have six shield power, essentially. I think I take it down with the Pike Beam, fire in the Flak, do damage with the Heavy Laser. Destroy that repair drone, start a fire, keep them busy. Missile coming in, defense drone still active. It is shooting down lasers occasionally, we do have to watch it. This is not a, a drone that we can just put out and leave. We've got to actually watch it, know what it's shooting, when when it's shooting. We gotta baby it, we gotta baby it. Now I think we just send in the flak because they only have a, essentially five shields now. So let's send in the flak. Hope that it can pierce all of them. It can't, so we wait. And they're gonna have essentially six shields because they're gonna have two super shield by the time the flak gets charged again. So we're just gonna wait a second. You know what, I don't need three shield power. I only need two shield power. Okay, now we pike beam, take down the shields, send in the flak, send in the heavy laser, we started a fire and we breached in that drone control room. Very nice. Their med base offline. We are doing damage to the ship with the flat gun. That's very nice because it means that if their shields stay down, we can actually sneak in more damage. And in fact, they have no shield overcharger drone. We can absolutely get in more damage. 
Okay, defense drones offline. We're gonna have to cloak the next time they fire a missile, unless we can kill them right now. Which I don't think we can do, but we can do a lot of damage to them, that's for sure. Heavy laser there. Wep oh, they're gonna die. They're gonna die. I just saw it. The, the pike beam did five damage and they had five hull integrity. So that's a very nice fight. Very nice, very easy. 105 scrap, what do we get? Reactor could be good, but I don't think it's entirely necessary. Again, we do have the backup battery. We can always dump 50 scrap into that to get two temporary power when we need it. I think we save for shields. I think we save for shields. I wonder if I wonder if there can be a rock pirate on this sector, because there's a mantis pirate. Could there be a rock pirate ship? I assume so. That'd be very nice to know, because maybe if you're at, you know, 14 kills and you get to this sector, Maybe you can actually get that uh, 15th rock ship kill just by coming here. I don't know. Maybe? All right, our pilot's going to take a beating, but that's okay. Mantis is already to jump in there and finish off these two humans. We have a five-shot laser and a halberd. means we're going to cloak out of the laser, and the halberd can't do any damage to us. Weapons ready to go. Fire in the flak. You guys go back to the med bay. We have a better pilot. Pike beam their weapons. Maybe take out the laser before it actually gets a chance to fire. That would be nice. It did. Don't need a cloak. Everyone go back into the med bay and get healed up. Yeah, they're, they're not going to last very long. Human's almost dead, but it doesn't matter too much because he's not going to... Uh... Like, we're not going to kill the crew. So, I don't know. <laughs> Goodbye, mantises. Help me with these invaders, please. We got a lot of scrap from that. It is actually enough that we can get the next shield upgrade, which I am thankful for. Unfortunately, we didn't get anything from the civilian ship that this pirate was chasing. They escaped. And as such, we didn't get anything. No repair, no free weapon, no extra scrap. But now, can get... Next bar of shields, and now all of our power goes into cloak, drone control, and uh, reactor power. Because we we now need a little bit of reactor power. We're going to need four total for the drone system on the second phase of the fight. We're still going to need three power for the other phases. We still have some engine power that we need. If we get the cloaking upgrade, we're going to need a little bit more bonus reactor power for that. So we definitely still need to upgrade ourselves. There is still stuff to do with scrap. Defense Drone Mark II, very annoying. Vulcan, not that bad, especially if we can use our Defense Drone Mark II to counter their Vulcan. We can stay here basically indefinitely. They're not sending any sort of a drone after us or anything. So I, I kind of feel like... I kind of feel like the Defense Drone's the best option. I, I might as well not use it immediately. And I can cloak if I need to, to keep their Vulcan at bay, but if possible, I think I can just completely uh, get out of their Vulcan shots by just using the defense drone. If the flak takes down their shields, though, we, we, we win because the pike beam can just do damage to five systems at a time. Heavy laser can even sneak in a shot, probably. We have, to be, we have to be very quick about firing it, though. The defense drone has turned to fire at the flak shots coming in, which means that they are about to hit. So let's fire in the heavy laser right now. Fire in on their shields. Pike, pike beam can do damage to their engines, drone system, shield, weapons. Good. We destroyed the repair drone, started a big fire in their shield room. They're getting healed up. They have a lot of stuff to repair, so they are not going to be able to pilot and dodge and evade and get their FTL charged. Might as well fire in the flak first, maybe take out the defense drone mark two. Augment drone recovery arm. Here's the thing, that's actually really good because it means that we can use a defense drone at whenever we want and we can always recover the drone part. The problem is we have... 13 drone parts. We don't need the drone recovery arm. If this was Sector 1, this would be like how we, we play the run. This would completely change the entire run for us, but 
At this stage of the game, I kind of just want to kill them and get a little bit of extra scrap. We can't really find a store. Maybe there is a store, but... Like, it's just not worth it, is it? That's a, that's a good augment, and in fact, we got less scrap out of it. But if there's no store, then it doesn't really do all that much for us, because we don't need 14 drone parts to finish this, this run. We need, like, six at most. They're pretty close to the base, but we can get to the base from either the repair beacon or the left-hand side here, which we will have to go through a rebel-controlled beacon, unfortunately. Let's get some upgrades done. We are going to want reactor power. Let's get that done now. <clears throat> Bad jump. Only Federation ships means we can't get anything out of it. Let's go to the repair beacon. And again, you know, what do we need the drone recovery arm for? We're going to get five drone parts from this jump anyways. I think we just fight the Rebel flagship. 44 scrap. Let's dump that into the reactor. Ah. <sighs> Yeah. And let's fight. If I can go to one more beacon after this, I can get enough scrap to upgrade the drone control system so I can use the anti-drone. But I, I, I don't want the anti-drone for this phase, and this phase has the potential to be the worst phase. So I wanted that extra reactor power more so than I wanted an extra defense anti-drone. If I can't use the anti-drone for the second phase, whatever. I think it's more important to get the uh, that the reactor power at that moment because it helps with the first phase. Okay, it missed the drone. Is it going to have a chance at shooting it again? No. It landed in the piloting room. That's not the worst thing in the world. A little bit of reduced piloting is not that bad. We're still it's it's we're still going to have like a thirty eight percent chance to dodge normally, and I can still cloak to 98%. So when the missiles come in, I can still mostly evade them. It's not in shields, it's not in weapons, so we can still do damage to the enemy ship here. I'm okay with this, all things considered. Let's get the engines powered up. 38%. You know what? We might as well cloak right now. <laughs> You're a little bit slow on shooting down those missiles. I, I will grant you that. I'm not going to fire in the flak. We can't. we got to wait for the next round of them cloaking. So we might as well just kind of hang tight. Might as well back up battery. We're not using the power for anything else. We'll dump it into shields so that when the ions land, yep, inevitably they will land. We still have as much shield power as possible. Missiles will be firing again in a second. I can't cloak out of the missiles twice in a row. So we fire. We fire just in case a missile lands in the weapons room. The uh, flat gun's not going to go offline before it has a chance to fire. So get that shot in. Heavy laser goes in. Unfortunately, we missed with a lot of flak shots there. That's very, very, very unfortunate. One heavy laser shot landing, though, does mean I can sneak in a shot with the pike beam. But it's not that much damage. It's not that good. I kind of just want to actually go after their cloak and hacking system. Because if I can, it means we have a better chance to dodge when we can dodge, and they can't cloak for nearly as long. I think I think that's what we do here. We need to get the flak charging. They're going to get the weapons repaired pretty quickly. Pike beam. Yeah, like we can't take out their weapons or shields. They're going to get that stuff repaired very quickly. I think we focus on cloak. We did some damage to it. We actually did start a fire in the shield room. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, weapons are getting charged. You guys fix... Actually, Mantis, you go into the med bay. NG, you go try to help put out the fire. I don't want that fire to spread. We'll cloak out of the next missiles. We're doing okay. We're doing fine. They're going to cloak in a second. It's going to happen. Hopefully they only cloak for five seconds because they don't get the uh, cloaking system repaired in time. We have a 98% chance to dodge. Okay, fire's been put out. You guys go into the med bay, please. They cloaked. Flat gun is ready to fire. I think they cloaked for the full 10 seconds. They got it repaired in time, which kind of sucks, but that's okay. Laser's coming in. We have no dodge chance. There's no point in diverting power into engines, so I'm just not going to bother. Send in the flak. That's what I wanted to see. Now we heavy laser 
their missile launcher room because this should theoretically destroy if both shots land. It only has three integrity, both shots will do uh, four damage. Even if one shot lands, the pike beam will be able to do that third point of damage. So pike beam goes in as well, shields. Actually, I kind of feel like pike, pike beam starts on piloting to reduce their dodge chance for the, uh, for the heavy laser shots to go in. So let's do that instead. Good, both shots landed, we stunned him, we started two fires. This guy might actually actually just be dead. I think he's gonna, I think the stun's gonna wear off, but he's almost dead. He's almost dead. He's probably gonna get healed up, but that's okay. That was that was really, 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 really good damage right there. I, I, I appreciate the good damage that we got in there. Might as well get the dodge chance up. Flat gun could fire again, but they're just gonna cloak in a second, so I'm just gonna wait. Yeah, I think if I had fired, we wouldn't have been able to land our shots and it, it would have just been a waste. With the flat gun mark two, because it takes about 20 seconds to fire and the cloak recharges in 20 seconds, you really have to time your shots with the flak. You can't just auto fire that flak two. If you do, you are asking for trouble. Okay, fire in my flak. Fire in the heavy laser. Maybe I can kill two of these people in the weapons room. And in fact, I'm going to use the pike beam to do it as well. I don't think we killed them. I think we did too much hull damage, and they uh, the ship died before the crew did. So I don't think it. I don't think it's going to count. But either way, that was a good fight. We took three points of damage. That's not a, that's not bad. That's not a, that's not a lot of damage. And we can go to one more beacon, so we can get that drone control system upgraded. We can get the anti drone, maybe even a little bit more reactor power as well. The upgrades are pretty cheap, only thirty scrap, which I definitely approve of. Good stuff. Uh, we will attempt to download the ship's data stores and. Okay, we uh, pick up a second flak gun Mark II. Hmm. Well, I think that is awesome. <laughs> Having pairs and triples and quads of the same weapon is usually a winning strategy, and I think this is no exception. Like on the second phase of the rebel flagship fight we can just fire both of these flak shots in at the enemy shield system and it's going to completely wreck them we're not going to have the fire potential of the heavy laser but honestly we don't need it yeah two flaks i think they're going to do more hull damage and we have the pike beam that might be able to start a fire coming in after it yeah and against the third phase wrecking that super shield it's going to be so easy that is one hell of a drop to get this late in the game. Flat Gun Mark II, we only have two bits of combat left. I appreciate it though, that's gonna, that's fantastic, that's wonderful. Let's get the drone system upgrade, I can use the anti-drone against the next phase. Destroy those drones that are attacking me, make me a little bit safer. And we might as well just fight the Rebel Flagship immediately. I could maybe jump around to a couple more beacons and make it back in time, but why not? I think we are in a winning position, so let's go. Couple of drones coming in at me. No thank you, anti-drone. We're gonna get boarded, so we get the defense drone out. Hopefully it can shoot down the boarding drone. It did not. It's gonna go into the cloaking room, which is honestly the best place for it, because there's no one in there. It's not a manned room. We can very easily get the... Uh, that drone killed. I can even send the NG in there to help with the repairs once the drone has been killed. I have two levels of oxygen, so the oxygen's not going to go down at all. Good stuff. Flat guns. Flat guns now can auto fire because they have no cloak and there's two of them, so they're going to do a lot of damage in concert with one another. I think now we back a battery and get that power into the engines. Might as well divert power away from oxygen. They're going to finish the repairing very quickly because it's an NG. And here comes the massive barrage of flak shots. Can I attack? 
I can attack the drone control system as well. Very nice. And I think we ac actually cloak right here. Get out of the way of the missiles. Let the anti-drone kind of deal with the uh, the drones that are attacking us. Close all doors. Everyone go back to your rooms, except for you guys who are going into the med bay. We're cloaked, so we might as well divert power away from engines temporarily. Now we need power back into engines. Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be good. Anti drone doing a little bit of work keeping us safe. I'd prefer if it would just attack the uh, the combat drones, but that's okay. One one big problem with the defense drone on this phase is that the combat drones fire so quickly that this thing might be shooting at combat drone shots instead of missiles. But I think we're still fine. We have so much defense and offense right now with the flat gun. Like, they can't get stuff repaired faster than I can break it. They're already dead. Excellent. Nice. Yeah, I, I, I honestly don't really see us losing, especially with me going to the repair beacon right now. This is basically just 30 scrap for free that I can upgrade myself with. I think uh, I think this is pretty much done, and I think I will get the cloaking upgrade. Being able to cloak for a little bit longer on the next phase might be nice, just so that we can have more time to get the flax charged. We can dodge missiles maybe a little bit better. Now we will get mind control, so we do have to prepare for that, and there is a strict way in which I like to prepare for that. How? We're going to put everyone in non-important rooms. That means we're gonna put them in the cloaking room. We're gonna put them in the drone control room. Actually, wait, we have to uh, actually go forward one more jump first. But yeah, we put everyone in non-important room, non-man rooms, and then we jump, and then when they get mind controlled, we can send everyone back to their manned stations. Okay, we're getting boarded. One crew member should be easy. Uh, might as well vent him. I was thinking about sending in the mantises to deal damage to him, but you know what? Just vent him, keep my mantis HP as high as possible because I, I want to. I don't want them to be in the med bay diverting power from other systems if we jump soon. So we can cloak out of the missiles. That's not a problem. Yeah, just let him die slowly. They're gonna be sending over more uh, more humans, but that's okay. Uh, let's let's wait a second. Cloak. Kill this human, he's dead. You guys can go into the med bay, please. Flax ready to go, fire him. And maybe deal enough damage to take out one of their missile launchers. Nah, that's okay though, that's okay though. No wait, the, yeah, this is the third phase. Oh, I don't, I do not want to be boarded on the third phase. That's, that would be the biggest piss off. I think, I think we wait. I think we honestly wait, take damage, and deal with these two people on board my ship. Actually, no, Kremity can lock it down. But we've got to move now, though, is the problem. Okay, everyone move now. Pilot as well. Ah, you got to stay on doors, though. And you got to stay there. Okay, jump to the base. I think, I think here's what I do. I jump, I lock down the shield room, so that no one can get in there, and I hope that they don't mind control uh, Kremity or the NG. Hopefully they didn't walk into the uh, shield room while I was waiting. No, they didn't. Okay. Mantis and mind control. Everyone go back to your rooms. You lock down the room. They're going to suffocate. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. This is where it gets tricky. We don't need the engines powered up right now. We'll wait until everyone goes back into the room so we see what's going on. Okay, two people in the door room honestly kind of sucks because they're just going to be fighting the door room personnel. Why are these people not dying very quickly? Mantis and weapon... Ah, weapon personnel needs to stay there, though. This sucks because, again, I didn't necessarily want to leave so many crew aboard my ship. That's okay. Mantis is in the 
medbay destroying the system. I'd rather not have that happen. These guys are going to almost die. How do I deal with this situation? Here's what I think I do. You guys go into empty room. I'll have this rock man lock down the door room when he walks through it, and then we'll open all the doors here to vent them out and make them suffocate. I think that's what we do here. So you guys actually have to go through the med bay, please. In fact, NG can stay in the med bay to attack the mantis, not do very much damage to the mantis. And Crystal Crew member, as he walks out of the room, as he's beginning to walk out of the room, he locks it down behind him. Continues walking, goes through the med bay. Flax can auto fire. Now they might take down the doors, but hopefully they just die actually. Okay, uh, Ra Crystal Man needs to get in there and be attacked by the Mantis. Buy me some time. Okay, they stopped attacking the doors. They're starting to suffocate. Locked lockout is still working. We still have doors. This is good, this is good. They're about to fire missiles, so let's get the defense drone out. Let's get one anti-drone out just to be a, a bullet sponge in case it gets shot. Get the backup battery going. Might as well, with the missiles coming in, I'd rather dodge them if I can. We don't need four bars of shields until they power surge. Okay. Yeah, and that anti-drone did get shot down early, but that's okay. Okay, two missiles missed. Get the shields back online. Keep the med bay going. Okay, two of their crew members left. Two of their crew members are trying to get into the med bay. Let's get the mantis in here to attack them now. We can't lock down anymore, which is very unfortunate. I mean, ideally, I'd actually send the mantis into the door room. Keep them out in the uh, in the low oxygen for as long as we can. Power surge is incoming. We're going to cloak out of it as soon as it happens. Okay, Flax couldn't take down the super shield. Pike Beam will help. Missiles coming in. Power surge happening. This is when we cloak... Because they're firing at the same exact moment, I think what we do actually is... I think what we do actually is cloak with one power, because it's going to dodge everything. If I cloak with two power, it'll buy me time before they board me again, but I don't think that's necessary, because we can deal with the borders as soon as the mind control wears off, wears out, and it will wear out here very shortly. So we cloak for five seconds. Should give me just enough time, 105% dodge. We can divert some of that power into oxygen. Okay, these two human crew members aboard my ship are about to die. The mind control wore off, which is perfect. Everyone needs to get healed up. Everyone go back to your room. Actually, get healed up first and then go back to your rooms. They're gonna board me again in a second, but that's gonna be fine. Let's get the anti-drone out again to absorb a shot, my or a medbay powered up to level two. NG go back into the door room. Crystal go back into the weapons room. And honestly, if they're gonna try to get back into the door room, let them. We know how to deal with the situation. Turn off the oxygen, open the doors, vent them out. Ah, but you know what? We should attack them. We should bring the attack to them so that they can't uh, mind control me and then I have to worry about the invaders at the same time. Let's deal with them as soon as possible, even if that means reducing my own crew HP. Get them in there, attack these humans. I think we're good, I think we're good. NG, um, I don't need him in sensors. We, do, we can't man the station, I don't think, on this phase. Yeah, we can't. And also, I just, I want him to be a bullet sponge if I need him to be a bullet sponge. Missiles are going to be coming at us in a second. Let's get everything powered up to max, including oxygen. Let's, let's in fact, power that up to level two. 
just so that I have as much oxygen throughout the ship that I need. Flax go in, auto fire basically. Pike beam. One missile hit, empty room. Pike beam attack. Piloting, shields, teleporter. Mind control. Damaging the mind control a little bit helps. Every little bit helps. Okay, two humans dead. Get back into the med bay, please. Power surge incoming. We can cloak it. We can cloak it. Now that mind control is in the engine room, which kind of sucks. We're going to send the NG over there to deal with the mind controlled unit because he does a little combat damage, so he's probably not going to kill the, the uh, Zoltan. And we're going to attack their... Actually, we're just going to attack him in shields. We're going to kill them in the next shot. We have 14 damage coming in with the flat guns, plus damage from the pike beam. We can kill them in one more shot. So all we need to do is delay this Zoltan and we'll be fine. It, it sucks that this is the moment where they hacked him because, or mind controlled him because I need that dodge chance. But if they fire in their, late, their, air, their power surge and the missiles at the same time, I can just cloak them and we'll be fine. So what do we do? We wait. More people boarding us. Not a problem. Power surge coming in in a second. Missiles coming in. Perfect timing. Cloak. 80% dodge chance. We can do better. We can absolutely do better. We can get 100. So let's get 100. Uh, we can get 98. We can get 98. 98 and three bars of shields is fine. Okay, human, get out of there. I don't want you actually damaging that person. Missiles already landed. Yeah, right. Okay, good. Just follow follow the humans. These humans, they have a lot of doors to break through to get to the uh, engine room. We should be able to deal with them no problem. Especially with the pike beam taking out the mind control. They're dead. And we win. Excellent. Good ending to that run. That flat gun was very unusual but appreciated. We already had one flat gun mark too, so two flat guns, basically just auto fire them and let them do their work. They just cut through enemy ships like they had no shields whatsoever. 14 damage with those two weapons and then the pike beam on top of that, that can be another five or six, especially on the rebel flagship because it's so big and has so many rooms, you can get a lot of rooms in every beam. We were spoiled for choice at the end of that run, that's for damn sure. Pretty decent stats. Was that a... 5961, yeah, that was the fourth best run we've ever had with this ship. We had one better run, technically, that didn't end in a victory, so I guess it wasn't a better run, was it? Still have the one last achievement to do, Clash of the Titans, destroy 15 rock ships. I will get this achievement one day. One day. But now that I'm, now that I'm back to FTL, now that I'm mostly over my cold, my voice is still a little bit shot and deeper than it was before, uh, I, I think I've kind of come back to the game with a little bit of renewed vigor. I think maybe uh, before I w was just feeling a little bit uh, pre-sick and my energy was being a little bit sapped. But I feel I feel good now. I want to come back to FTLs as soon as I can. I might take a you know a little bit of a break right now to cough and blow my nose, but otherwise, FTL is not going anywhere. It's gonna be it's gonna be finished, and after that. I don't know what else I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to find another game to play, and also might be doing some co-video things with some friends of mine. So I'll have to make a uh, an update about that in the future if and when it, that happens. But yeah, I you know sorry for the delay in this episode, anyways. But again, I just I couldn't. I I don't want to do a video where the entire video is me blowing my nose and going, ah, oh, because that's 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 not that's not what I want to do. Um, and in fact, right now, I just, I felt like I needed to, needed to get this done, so came back to it. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more FTL content in the future and other stuff as it comes out, which it will be coming out soon. And I hope to see you here again for the next run.